Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk. Now, I want you to imagine for a second that I took a picture of a swan, and this swan looked like a black swan. But then, some white swan proponents come up to me and say, well, there's some problems with that image. Now, the first problem that they mention is that the sun is behind the swan, making the swan appear black when it would normally appear white. But the second problem that they mention is that I've taken pictures of that exact swan before. And in the other pictures, it was white. Now, at this point, as a black swan proponent, I could do a couple of things. I could either explain why it is a black swan and all the white swan proponents are wrong, or I could just play semantic word games. And when it comes to the word games, I could say something like, are you white swan heads seriously claiming that colour is apparent now? Just the other day, you were claiming that colour is definitely a real thing. Checkmate, white swan tards! Now, obviously, that kind of response doesn't actually deal with the issue. The issue is that the black swan is actually a white swan. Not that colour is apparent or anything. Okay, so now that I've mentioned that scenario, let's talk about the flat earth's black swan. So for those of you lucky enough to not know what I'm talking about when I mention the black swan, this image here is the black swan image, which supposedly shows that there is no curve to the earth. Now, despite it being thoroughly debunked, it seems that it's the go-to image for flat earthers. And I think I know why. I think the reason why is because the main people they listen to when it comes to the black swan is people like Nathan Oakley, like Nathan Thompson, like Quantum Eraser, who only show a little bit about the black swan and not the full picture. So I invite all the Flat Earthers to come along with an open mind and actually have a look at the black swan image and why I think that it is the worst Flat Earth evidence. In this video, I'll be going over frequent arguments that I hear in favour of the black swan, why the black swan is not even good evidence for a Flat Earth, and the things that flat earthers like Nathan Oakley and Nathan Thompson don't tell everyone. So let's start with the modus tollens argument. If P, therefore Q, not Q, therefore not P. So the way that this argument is usually formed is if the earth is a ball with a radius of 3,958 miles, then from an observer height of one foot, the horizon should be no further than 2.73 miles away. We see the horizon at much further than 2.73 miles away in the black swan image, so therefore the earth cannot be a ball with a radius of 3,958 miles. So I'm not going to go too in depth into this because I don't want this video to be dragged out for too long, but if you do want a good in depth explanation then I'll put a link in the description to one of AB Science's videos on this. So when it comes to the argument that the flat earthers are making here, it is all logically valid. However, that does not mean that it's correct. Let me demonstrate this by rephrasing the argument in support of a globe Earth. If the Earth is flat, then objects should never disappear bottom up over the horizon. Objects do disappear bottom up over the horizon, therefore the Earth cannot be flat. Now the thing is, both arguments that I've made here are both valid arguments because the conclusion follows from the premises. However, the problem with them is that there are unstated assumptions. The unstated assumption in both of these is that no atmospheric effects are in play, although flat earthers might argue that the unstated assumption of the one in support of a globe earth is that perspective cannot make things disappear bottom up. So if it is possible to show that there are atmospheric effects in play when it comes to the black swan image, then the black swan image doesn't check the unstated assumptions, which means that the conclusion cannot follow from the premises because an unstated assumption is like an unstated premises. So is it possible to show that in this image there are atmospheric effects in play? Well, I hope you're looking at the image because it's pretty obvious that there are atmospheric effects in play. Now, one thing to note is that just because there are atmospheric effects in play, it doesn't mean that the Earth is most definitely a globe now. It just means that we've got to move the discussion out of the realm of simple syllogisms and instead talk about how the atmospheric effects can play a role in the image. So atmospheric refraction is something that I'm sure flat earthers are sick and tired of hearing people like myself talk about. 
However, it is something that is crucial in order to understand how we can get images like the black swan. So generally, light travels in a straight line. However, if light enters a medium which is of a different density to the medium that it is leaving, then light can change its direction. So Earth's atmosphere doesn't actually have a uniform density. In fact, there's quite a few density gradients within Earth's atmosphere. And when light travels through a density gradient, then it doesn't just bend once, it is being constantly bent. Now when it comes to light bending, light will always be bent towards the denser part of the medium. So if the atmosphere is denser at sea level than it is 50 meters up, then the light will be bent downwards. However, if it was denser 50 meters up than at sea level, then the light would be bent upwards. Now one thing that does affect the density of air quite a bit is temperature. If you get a change in temperature, then you'll get a change in density. So using that knowledge, we can say that if we have a lower temperature closer to sea level than we do higher up, then light will be bent down, and if you've got a higher temperature closer to sea level than you do higher up, then light will be bent upwards. This is very important, because if light is bent downwards, then the horizon will appear further in the distance than it actually is, and will also appear higher in the image. And another thing to keep in mind is that the horizon that we see when this is the case is not the same thing as the physical horizon. I just had to get that out there because that's going to become important later on in the video. So one thing that flat earthers might say if they think about it for a little bit is just because refraction can happen in the way that I describe it, it doesn't mean that it is happening in the way that I describe it. So because of that, to get an idea of what's actually going on here, I think that it's a good idea to look at other images of black swans. So here we can clearly see two black swans. Really, can we actually get to the proper image? No, not that image. No, not that image either. I'm talking about the image with the oil platforms. Yeah, that's the one. Jeez, that was a stupid joke. So in this image, we can see that even though it is rather blurry, the horizon is clearly behind the platforms. And unlike the original Black Swan image, where parts of the platform were bent in rather strange ways, this one doesn't appear to have as much of that. Although, it's a little bit too blurry to say for certain. So what this means is it means that the Black Swan has been replicated. So, flat earthers, go ahead, give yourselves a pat on the bat for actually doing something right. But now it's time to delve into the other images of the Black Swan. The ones that don't really get shared around flat earth circles quite as much. And there's a reason for that. So here we have the flat swan. Yes, the horizon does appear behind the platforms. But the platforms are looking very squished in this. So that image isn't very good evidence for flat earth because of the obvious atmospheric refraction that's going on there. But let's take a look at some other images, taken by the same person that took all the images of black swans we've seen today. Well, apart from the images of actual black swans. I took those. So here we have platforms disappearing bottom first over the horizon. Now, you might remember something that I said earlier in the video. What I said was, if the Earth is flat, objects should never disappear bottom first over the horizon. What we are seeing here is objects disappearing bottom first over the horizon. So does that mean that the Earth is not flat? Judging by this image alone, no. Because if you remember earlier, I said about unstated assumptions like atmospheric effects. Atmospheric refraction is a subset of atmospheric effects. And there is definitely some atmospheric refraction that's happening in this image. What it does do, however, is it does poke holes in this idea that the black swan is a consistent thing that we expect to consistently see all the time. But here, we have a nice, crisp, sharp image of platforms habitat and hill house. But one of the key things here is that some of these platforms appear to be hidden by the horizon. And here we have another rather clear image where the platforms appear to be hidden by the horizon. Now with all those images, you can do a quick comparison. You've got three that suggest the Earth is a globe, and you've got three that suggest it's flat. Now of these images, Two of the ones that appear to support the flat Earth have significant amount of atmospheric refraction in them, and the other is rather blurry. Now, of the images that appear to support the globe Earth, one of them does appear to have a significant amount of atmospheric refraction, but the other two 
are very clear. Now, if any of these images are going to be affected by atmospheric refraction, it's more so going to be the ones that appear to support the flat Earth than the ones that support the globe Earth. Now, here's a good question. Why is it that people like Nathan Oakley and Nathan Thompson never contend with the images that appear to support a globe Earth? They will talk about the black swan images at length. They are wanting to discuss the black swan images at length. However, when it comes to the images where the bottom of the platforms are hidden, they just dismiss them. They will say that the black swan images prove the Earth is flat, but by their own logic, the images where the bottoms of the platforms are hidden would prove the Earth is a globe. And I think that's where the problem lies, because if they had to deal with the images where the bottoms of the platforms are hidden, then they would have to explain why their logic works for the black swan image, but doesn't work for other images. And if they did show those images, then some of their audience might think, well, hold on a second, could that possibly be Earth Curve? And if people in the audience think that, then they start missing out on views, which means that they start missing out on ad revenue and super chat money. And on a side note, notice that every single thing that Nathan Oakley does on YouTube is designed in such a way that he can make super chat money from it. He'll live stream, which you can get a fair amount of super chat money from, but if he makes a video, he doesn't just upload a video like normal people, he will premiere every single video. Even if it's two minutes long, he premieres it. Seems like someone that wants to get the super chat money. But when it comes to flat earthers, because they don't deal with the images where the platforms are partially hidden, it means they don't have a really good explanation for it. They'll say perspective without giving any way in which we can tell whether perspective is having an effect in certain images or not. Now rather than just simply dismissing flat earthers arguments because they say something like perspective, I think that it's better to try and analyse what they might mean by perspective. Now they could mean something like, oh, if something is disappearing bottom first over the horizon, if you zoom up on it, you'll be able to bring the stuff that has disappeared back into view, which has never actually been demonstrated, ever. Now they could be meaning some weird rule of perspective which makes things disappear bottom up, but the formula for perspective, arc tan of the height over distance, doesn't imply this at all. But one thing that they could be talking about, which does have a hint of legitimacy to it, is atmospheric refraction. Now the question becomes, how do we know if refraction plays a role in what I'm going to call the anti-black swan images? Well, it's actually rather simple. You see, Mick West has actually modelled out what the atmospheric conditions would need to be to cause different types of refraction on both a flat earth and a globe earth. Here we see the atmospheric conditions that would be needed on a globe earth to create the black swan image, and here we see the conditions that would be needed on a flat earth to create the anti-black swan images. In the standard black swan image on the globe, you get a gradient where the air is colder towards the ground and then gets hotter the further up you go. Whereas in the anti-black swan images on a flat earth, you get a gradient where the air is warmer towards the ground and then gets cooler the further up you go. Now which of these two scenarios do you think is more likely to happen? That air is cooler towards the ground or air is warmer towards the ground? Now if you learnt the same things that I did in primary school, then you'll know that hot air rises, which means that it's far more likely that you'll get cold air towards the ground. Yes, it is actually that simple. You don't need to be a genius to work it out. All right, so there's still a few arguments that I need to address. The first of them being, how does a horizon get raised up above the horizon? Now, the way that I think flat earthers might be thinking about this, and I might be wrong, is that how can something be above itself? So obviously something can't be raised up above itself. However, the physical horizon and the apparent horizon are not the same thing. So therefore, the apparent horizon can be raised up above the physical horizon. The next one I get is, well, if the horizon is apparent, then it can't be geriatric. I mean, geometric. And if the horizon is geometric, then it can't be apparent. You can only have one and not the other. And my response to that is, well, let's try applying that logic to the platforms. If the shape of the platforms is apparent, then it cannot be geometric. If the shape of the platforms is geometric, then it cannot be apparent. Does that still hold? Well, in the black swan images, the shape of the platforms is most definitely apparent. 
So does that mean that the platforms have no geometric shape? I actually haven't had any flat earther deal with that particular argument. All they seem to do is dismiss it. Especially Nathan Oakley, he just completely dismissed it. Another one that I hear is that the shape of the platforms doesn't matter at all. But the thing is, you're using the platforms to determine where the horizon is. If I took the platforms out of that image, all you'd just have is a picture of water. And the platforms do provide useful information about the image, like what might have the atmospheric conditions been when the image was taken. Anyway, I think that pretty much covers it. Flat Earthers, if you are watching to now, please do analyse this information with a critical eye, rather than just dismissing it. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie and Mori. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.